Now in this video, I wanna share with you nine ways to channel abundance into your life. Now I wanna be very specific with what I mean by channeling abundance. You see, abundance is a matter of more and more is not always the um, ideal scenario or the ideal quest of our journey but it is still a pursuit that we all have within us and we aim to achieve. So in this video, I wanna share with you some methods and habits as well as just some techniques that you can apply to your day-to-day -day life to actually increase the outcome of the things that you have that you really want to achieve. And of course, abundance, not just meaning material, but internal peace as well. So let's go. The first way I want to share with you that you can channel your you know, your chances of abundance and really get your particular and your motion thought process going more towards the things you want as opposed to the fears and the negative thoughts that tend to sway and of course from day to day slip within to our mind frame. The first thing I wanna share with you is to watch your intake. Now what I mean by watching your intake is that there are so many people that we communicate on a day to day basis, so many things that we listen to and so many engagements of news, press and radio that we in intake on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, the problem with all this information is that not all of it is geared towards helping you become the best person. I strongly always advise learning to monitor the things that you're intaking, the conversations you're having. I found in my throughout my journey that there have been a number of conversations with people that have from time to time added fear within my quest, whether someone's talking to me about the bad things that have happened to people that have become successful, or someone's telling me about dramas in relationships. A lot of these things, I mean, initially they feel quite comforting because it's surrounded with negative connotations that aren't exactly happening in our current situation. However, they have an effect on our psyche as well as the way we feel about our journey going into those kind of environments or those kind of positions. So I strongly suggest and advise to watch your intake. Control the things that you're listening to, whether it's you know too aggressive or whether it's surrounding yourself with people that are pessimistic and quite doubtful around life. It's important to watch your intake, almost like a diet. You know, you wouldn't feed yourself fried food or takeaway food every single night because it's gonna have a bad consequence on your physical, mental, and of course your spiritual soul. So it's important to watch your intake. Hey, so another value that I feel is really important to add to your journey of abundance is to see value in every penny. Along the way, it's going to be very easy to not value the small income or the small pennies that you see because you're on the pursuit of wealth, whether that's to become a millionaire, a billionaire, or just to be financially free. But it's important that you understand the compound effect of the penny. You see, when I say value money, I say value money in all senses. A lot of the time, you find a lot of people that don't value the five cents or the 5p, they don't value the 10 cents, or the pound or the dollar because they see it as an easy flowing currency that doesn't have to be held onto because it doesn't really matter. But that is a poverty way of thinking. It's important that you learn to put value in every penny because it's through that value that you can have respect for the wealth that's and the abundance that starts to come. But you have to be able to see that in the interim of that, you have to become more, more of a monitor of money. You gotta to start to see whether or not the things that you spend your capital on, whether they seem in your mind quite low in monetary expense, are really worth it, you know? A lot of the time we, t we find ourselves spending excess amounts with small little reoccurring fees, which actually end up being quite large. So in order to really start to channel that energy of abundance, it's important for us to value capital in the sense of every level, not just valuing the amount we want to get to, but even where you're at today. How can you look at the currency and the money you have coming in and just alter and remove costs that you see as small because they don't really affect the whole number? Abundance is about everything. So let's start by, of course, making sure that I suggest you don't just focus primarily on, you know, the big figure and focus also on the little one the transactions and the little amounts that you have access to or that flow in and out of your life on a daily basis. Another way to channel this energy of abundance and to really attract it into your life is to really be at 
actively involved and really take control of the language that you use by removing I can't with I will. Now that sounds very, very easy and I'm sure you've heard it in many stories or songs along the way and I get it, but it's so important that you understand that we are cognitively designed to setting our own limitations with words and through those words we create actions and through those actions they can either move us forward or restrict us and by changing I can't I will even if we feel inside it's impossible we begin to cognitively change the way in which we approach things moving forward because there are no limits to what you are capable of but the first point of actually addressing those capabilities is by leaving the door open to them. And we're not doing that by introducing words that are derogative to what our ability is capable of doing, even if you're not aware of it right now. So try it. Whenever you get obstacles on a day-to-day -day basis or you meet people and, and you see things or opportunities that you feel in, heart, in your heart or the back of your mind you can do, but then you hear that voice that says, I can't, just tell it you will. And just by that, that, that cognitive change alone, you're going to start hearing and feeling a bit more confident about the unknown because it's the unknown that is closer and closer to the abundance that you deserve in your life. Remember that. Change, I can't with I will. Another tool to channel this energy of abundance is to see work as an opportunity. You see, a lot of the time, people tend to systematically see their work as a thing that they have to do and they see it as a place that they have to be. And in some cases, that is the case. But as you start to step into the person that you aspire to become, and as you actually start to invest in your dream, you have to see every day as an opportunity. Because going into your workspace or your dream, whether that's a talent, whether that's a career, whether that's a, an art, you have to see your work as an opportunity. Because it's through that opportunity and through that mindset that you will be open to actual opportunities that can happen within the day. Because a lot of the time people go into work with one set of goals in mind and that is to get in and get out. And that is not what we're here to do when we're building our dreams and we're trying to attract that abundance. We are going into work because one, it's a blessing. We have a new day, we can breathe. But more than anything, because it's an opportunity for change. You have no idea where or when your change is going to happen. But the last thing that you want to have on your psyche or in your, in your thought pattern is the idea that you are doing something that you don't want to do and it's work. So remember that. Make sure that you start to see work as an opportunity, a space where you can create a whole change for your life that you can't even see yet. So remember that. See work as an opportunity. Another principle to keep in mind in your journey of abundance is gratitude. You see, a lot of the time we get caught in the vision and the goal and the person that we want to become without giving the fact or giving thanks to the person that we are. Thanking our, uh, our whether, whether you're into, you know, a religion, the universe, spirits, giving thanks to your existence plays a big part in being present. And you can do this in many ways, whether it's a small silent moment in the morning, a meditation, a walk, but by giving thanks to your present state, you're enabling yourself to upgrade because you're accepting as well as happy and embracing that there are factors that are working for you in your life. They may not, you know, in your mind, equal the monetary or the material goods. But once you begin to become thankful for the things that are happening, when the other things start happening, it's only going to be a compound effect. So remember, Gratitude is really important. Another principle to really channeling that abundance that you already have within yourself is to also reduce the noise. Now, listen, I understand and I completely um, I'm aware of the world events that we deal with day to day. And as true and as real as they are, to some extent, we have to create a limitation to all of the information given to us because it only takes one bit of information and one bit of action to see a change. But when you get a mountain of information with no action and just information, it becomes noise. I strongly suggest that anybody that's looking for that abundance, 
learns to reduce the noise that they have going on around them that is non-conducive to a progressive solution. And what I mean by this is noise can come in the form of fear, it can come in the form of the news, it can come in the form of the TV or the sitcoms that you're watching. You've got to take control of your psyche because like I said to you in the last principle, we are trying to find opportunities in the day. And when you go into the day with a dent in your belief, it is only going to prevent your growth. So I strongly ad advise you to learn to reduce the news. If you're constantly looking at the stock market and hearing how bad it is, why would you ever get involved in it? If you're constantly hearing about the property market being tumultuous and negative, why would you ever invest in it? If you are constantly hearing about the things that are happening in the world that are restricting people, why would you feel that you can grow forward? It's important to put a limit to the noise. And by doing that, I'm not sitting here saying be ignorant because it's important to know what's happening. But how many times over do we have to know the same thing without us making a change to that can represent not only our individual circumstances, but people that we aspire and we help around our situations. So remember that, learn to reduce the noise. Another way to really channel that energy of abundance is to learn to give. You see, karma is a very, very real thing. And by giving without the expectation of, you know, actually getting the return, we start to create that system for ourselves. Abundance is not always about what you receive, it's also what you project into the world. And through that projection, you're only gonna get that circulation back. So what I mean by this is it's important to learn to give, to look around to those that really need that support and that time. And I don't mean just financially. A lot of the time we're on our journeys and we're trying to be successful and the greatest people, but this also causes us to you know, neglect our loved ones or neglect our family or neglect people that mean something to us. So learn to also give with your time, with conversations. Learn to give with your perspective. Don't enforce anything and don't you know, sit there trying to convince anyone to be in the same mindset or start the same business as you. That's another thing. But I mean in the sense of giving your time. Because at the end of the day, you know, when you're giving and you know you're giving with good intent, naturally the way the world works is that karmically you are in a position to be in, in a return factor of good and abundance coming back to you. So remember that, learn to give. The eighth way to channel this level of abundance, which like I said, it already exists. We are tapping into something that you already have. We're just stepping through it, is to set goals with no limitations. Now, listen, I know that it feels uncomfortable writing on a pen and paper what you aspire to have. When it's miles away from where you're currently at, I get it, it makes sense. I'm someone that grew up in South London with his parent who was a father who passed away when I was eight years old. And, you know, for me, based at where I'm at today, writing it down at that time, I'm far away. But the reality is, is had I not had the balls to write it, had I not had the balls to believe, I wouldn't be where I am today. You see, goal setting is not always just an exercise of doing a list of things that you want to achieve. It's testing the limitations that your mind has. In my book, Become Your Own Hero Again, I mentioned in the first uh, two chapters about, you know, at the start of your of, of life, when you had no limitations, wanting to be astronauts, firemen, you know, we, 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 we grew with, we came into this world with no limitations and somewhere along the line, it dimmons. And goal setting is so powerful because it allows you to start to believe and to cognitively start thinking of ways at the back of your subconscious and unconscious mind ways that you can do it and you have to trust a bit of that unconscious mind because it does have a power way beyond your conscious level of thinking so if you get my book become your own hero again i map out exactly how to write your goals down i break it down for you so you can do short-term and long-term goals and that's if you need any assistance if you already can do it fire away but one thing i'll always say and i always say it to everyone that messages me about my book Set the goals, but set them with no limitations. Learn to be brave with the ambition and the dreams that you have. And the first step is by writing it. The final principle that I want to leave with you today to channel that abundance into your life is to annihilate doubt. You see, doubt is the only thing that gets in the way of everything that we are capable of. And when I say doubt, I mean doubt in the sense of the thoughts that we have. 
the thoughts that no one hears, the fears that have been ingrained in us over the years. You have to remember that fear is false evidence appearing real. And as you pursue this level of abundance that you're heading towards, you have to learn to face your fear head first and to annihilate it by not letting it control you. You see, fear wins when you ingrain doubt because doubt is something that you are presenting in your brain but has never actually happened in your reality. So it's important that moving forward, you remember that when you hit those moments of life, because I've had them myself, I've been in scenarios where I'm in the Philippines and I start questioning whether or not this was the right thing to do and was, you know, I'm far away here, I'm, I'm like 18 hours away on a plane and I have no family and friends here. And then I say to myself, but this is exactly why I'm going to be in the position I want to be in moving forward because I'm doing everything that my comfort and my knowledge knows way beyond and I'm actually in the scenario where I'm able to change my life in real time because I've taken the action beyond my doubt. So remember this guys, I want to really make sure that you all see that doubt is something that is connected to fear but that you control based on how you handle it. So whenever you wake up in the morning, even if you wake up and tell yourself that you annihilate doubt, just remember that it exists and let's call it on. Let's, let's embrace it. Let's tell us, uh, let's acknowledge that that doubt exists. Let's confront that doubt and make sure that we never allow doubt to limit or control our behavior because you are the key to your abundance. And by acknowledging a lot of these emotional factors that play a part in you really stepping and breaking through your limitations, it is only then that you're really going to be able to really embrace, enjoy and live in the abundance that you deserve. So these are my nine principles to channeling abundance into your life. And it's just a start, but they're principles that you can get going with straight away. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button at the top. And if you have any other principles or methods of abundance that you can suggest to the community, please share them inside the comment section. I'm Leonard and I upload at least three videos every week geared towards helping you with your sales orientation, communication and conversion. It's always great sharing information with you and I look forward to speaking and uploading more content with you moving forward. Speak to you soon.